Hello, I'm Elisa Mar. I hope you are all well. Today I'm taking you for an exclusive interview of John Dryden. John Dryden is definitely a radio guy. He's a radio drama writer, he's a director, and he's also an editor. I discovered this sensory world with Pandemic, a gloomy anticipation thriller about the deadly epidemic of a mutated flu. I've been following him and his producer Emma Hearn on the shoot of the second series of Two Man Bay for BBC Radio 4. Two Man Bay is his masterpiece. It's very long, it's eight episodes long, and it recreates the Mamluk Empire, which is a mysterious and scandalous slave dynasty of Egypt. Two Man Bay is everything you've ever wished for for a radio drama. It's a political intrigue, it's a family drama, and it's also a period piece, of course. John Dryden, I think, is the creator of the most forward-thinking radio dramas and probably the builder and thinker of its renewal through podcasts and corporated funded projects. So I sat with him in the dead room on the last day of shoot for a chat about radio, fiction and Aaron Copeland. Okay, yes, it's working. Hello, John. Hello. Um, so we've been working together for a few yes. days now, and there is a lot of things I'd like to know about your work. Mm -hmm. um, so you are a radio director, yeah. a writer, editor, producer a little bit sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we've been working on a project. I don't know if you can talk about it right yeah. now. Um, so we've been working on um, Tumen Bay, which is a historical epic uh, conspiracy thriller type series. It's the second second uh, series of Tumen Bay. It's for BBC Radio 4. Nice. What were your influences and inspirations for this project? Um, well, the idea of Tumen Bay was to create a kind of fictional history um, that we could use to deal with a lot of modern day uh, themes, political themes often, um, about religion, politics, uh, belief, sex, um, violence. Um, and by creating a kind of fictional world, we could sort of deal with these themes in a, in a, in a sort of unhindered form. And um, the, the inspiration for the setting was, was actually the Mamluks, um, which, which is a sort of dynasty of uh, rulers in the 13th to 15th century, Uh, who, who kind of dominated the Middle East for, for, for some time, and they were based in Cairo. So Tumen Bay itself is very much kind of modelled on Cairo in that period. Um, and at the time, it was the most cosmopolitan city mm. on earth. It was so wealthy. People came from all over the world to be there. Mm. Um, merchants from India, artists from Italy, you know, it's everywhere. Mm. They came to Cairo. And so this idea of... of Tumen Bay, uh, you know, based on Cairo, was that we could have a very kind of diverse cast and it would feel right in this world. Yeah, and we can hear it in the... We will hear it uh, on, uh, on air. Do you, can you tell us when it's going to be broadcast on Radio 4? Yeah, it's going to be broadcast on Radio 4 in April. Okay. Um, and the first series will also be released at the same time, okay. re-released at the same time. Okay, great. So let's go back to you. Um, I was uh, wondering why and how did you get into... Your radio drama, and it's a very specific um, type of writing, directing, yeah. feeling towards creation. What do you um, well, you know, like a lot of these things, I, I, you, you just sort of take opportunities where they come. So I didn't have a plan to, to make radio drama. Um, I knew I was interested in drama. So at school and university, I did a lot of theatre. Um, I worked in television straight after university for a while. And... Um, Uh, and and I, I'd moved to London at that point after university and I started listening to radio drama, which I didn't really know existed before. Um, and uh, initially, I was interested in documentaries and I made quite a few documentaries mm. for several years before um, making any drama. But, but drama of some form or other, whether it was theatre or film or television or radio... Was, was kind of what I wanted to do. And yeah. so I was using, I, think, I guess I was using documentaries as a way into that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but also the documentaries I w was making were very much um, dramatic in terms of their structure. 
they were long 45 minute type dramas mm. uh, type documentaries yeah. that that had characters and um and so uh, so the reason I got into drama in radio was I saw an opportunity mm. having made a few documentaries uh I realized that most of the dramas that I listened to were very studio bound mm. and um having made documentaries out on the streets following people around I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to make a radio drama in the way that I've been making these documentaries? Mm. And so that was kind of my pitch to the BBC. Mm. And um, so there was an opportunity. It, okay. it, it, it kind of came about through that. Yeah. Mm. Um, and at first, they were kind of one-off dramas, often very contemporary, news-based type, mm. type dramas. But the style really seemed to work for me. And so mm. I... I I started applying the same style to, say, doing Good. a period piece, to mm. doing all sorts of like more stru- like Tum and Bay. Okay, I did a Dickens adaptation like that, and um, it it was a, a style that kind of worked. And 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 it was, and so in radio drama, I could I could have a very specific, unique style that no mm. one else had. The fact that you're doing that you've been mixing documentary and drama is a way to make the drama feel more real, more present? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, the reality is kind of always more interesting in a way. But, but drama is, you know, kind of makes you think of things that happen in the real world in a different way. Um, but I think in terms of technique, making a drama using documentary techniques gives it a kind of enhanced realism. It makes it sort of more credible. And and um, actually you see it a lot even in um, film documentaries and, and drama. Drama is constantly, even in feature films, drama is constantly trying to make it look like mm. it's, it's documentary, like it's real. And documentaries are constantly trying to make themselves yeah. look more mm. like kind of feature films. Yeah, you know, right. they have all the kind of angles and mm. everything like that. So in some ways the two the two forms are kind of converging and mm. maybe they'll just cross over the other side. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which side yeah. we don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was uh, wondering if you'd wish your children to do the, to have your the, career, to do the, uh, the, yeah, the I job mean, you're doing. Who knows what the world will be like when they yeah. grow up, but um, it's been really good. I mm. mean, I, you know, it's been really nice. I've, I've constantly been in work and, um, you know, For me, I think the luck was that I found quite early on a style that made everything that I make very distinctive to what other people were making. And I th- so if, if I was to give my children any advice, it would be to find what it is mm. that is your style yeah. because there's no point trying to just do what mm. other people are doing. Mm. Um, and, and so in, you know, at the time that I was trying to break into drama, there was a real opportunity in radio drama mm. because all radio drama was made in a studio yeah. with fixed mics in a mm. certain way and it all kind of sounded similar mm. because of that. Um, so, yeah, so whatever my children end up doing, <laughs> it's, it's a few years, yeah, before they'll do anything. Yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, the world changes and I hope they'll, they'll look for where, you know, the opportunities that relate to them are. Oh. I have only less, just two yeah, questions. Yeah. Um, where do you see drama in the future? How do you see uh, it well, happening? The, um, well, specifically to audio drama, there was, there was definitely a feeling a few years ago that it was an outdated... Uh, um, you know, many, in many countries, it had pretty much stopped. In America, there really wasn't much radio drama. It hadn't been for 40 years except for, you know, enthusiasts making it at home. Um, and, and Radio 4 and the BBC and, and some stations in Europe as well were the few, you know, but they were publicly funded mm. broadcasters that were just kind of keeping it going. Otherwise, it would have disappeared completely and superseded by the visual medium. But it's... Um, There's a resurgence happening in, in the States and particularly with podcasts and um, and it's become very, very lucrative. And mm-hmm. so fiction podcasting has become quite a big industry just in the last couple of years in the States. And and that's really changed things, you know, for the for the publicly funded broadcasters. Um, there's suddenly this competition out there. Um, and so I think it's it's focused everyone on the medium and um mm. and i think it's 
it, the next few years, it's, there's going to be a lot of opportunities for producers. Good. Yeah, <laughs> That's great. I think so. Just a last question, which is a tricky one. If you had to go on a desert island, you can only take three CDs, three books, and three movies with you to watch for the rest of your life. Huh. Which one would you choose? Three CDs, three movies, and three books. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> I told you. <laughs> yeah, it's tricky. Um, okay, CDs. I'd probably take Dark, Dark Side of the Moon. Mm-hmm. It's a classic, yeah. <laughs> yeah, classic, yeah. Um, I'd probably... I'd probably take Moby... 18. Mm. <laughs> I, 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 love, I love this guy, yeah. Uh, brilliant. <laughs> and then I'd probably have to take something classical that mm. I could sort of, you know, kind of unpick. Yeah. Um, uh, I'd probably take... Um, I'd probably take Aaron Copeland's mm. uh, clarinet concerto. Nice, yeah. very nice. And classical music is nice to relax when you know you're alone on a desert island for the rest of your life. Yeah. I guess it's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Book-wise, okay, I, um, I'd probably take... A, a favourite novelist, though, is, is, is um, Gillian Flynn, who wrote Gone Girl. And I would probably take one of her early novels. She's written, written three novels, actually. Mm. I'd probably take Sharp Objects, just mm. because it's so... Uh, twisted mm. and uh, I just I really just yeah. admire her <laughs> writing style yeah uh, I'd probably take uh, the bible uh, uh, yeah <laughs> I mean possibly possibly um, yeah it is a hard uh, one I, yeah, I probably would take the bible I guess <laughs> or something like that so yeah. that I could really kind of if I was there forever that you could really look into it and you know, try to understand what the hell is happening. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I'd take a book called The Great Game by Peter Hopkirk, mm. which is a sort of non a, a fi- a non-fiction okay. history. Yeah, I really enjoy that. Um, and then films. I might take Cabaret. Oh, nice. Um, just to have a bit more music. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's clever. <laughs> Musical. I'd probably take a Apocalypse Now, if it's oh, epic yeah. mm. nature. And it's and, music as well. <laughs> yeah, and I'd probably take um, Space Odyssey. Well, that's all. Okay, great. Good. Thank you very much. <laughs> that was the radio drama director, writer, producer and editor John Dryden about his latest project to Mount Bay, his job, his hopes and his favorite artists. I'm Elisa Mar. Thank you for listening. <laughs>